Welcome to today's lecture, and this is some additional footage we got during the ADB project. The project was sponsored by SFI, Science Foundation Ireland, and we're, speci we're specifically looking at diseases. So I'm fast forwarded the footage here just to go through a colony. Now, this colony overwintered on brood and a half, and two weeks previous, we had actually switched the super down under the brood box. So the queen would emerge up and the bees would let the brood emerge and we could take away any frames inside that super and melt them down because we don't want honey uh, mixed in where there was bees or young larvae growing. So I'm doing a quick inspection looking at the dark side of the frame first to just to make sure that there's no eggs there and the queen isn't there which there isn't and the queen has actually gone up into the brood box so we're just waiting for the balance of the eggs here to emerge now we're into where the brood was you can see the brood is capped and again we're quickly going through it here just to make sure the queen is not there can see a bee starting to emerge there. But I will slow the footage down when we get to the full inspection of the colony. So we're coming down out to the end of where the brood was. So there was three or four supers there. Um, brood pattern isn't bad. But just as I was going through it, then lo and behold, we had a visitor inside in the colony. So if when I lift off the colony here, we can see a mouse got in and the bees killed the mouse and the mouse couldn't get out. So this can be one of the problems that you will find in spring on one of your first inspections. And that mouse, you can be sure, would have done damage. So I want to put this box back together to let the brood emerge. And I'm just putting a queen excluder over it so that the queen doesn't go back down into the super so that next week when all that brood has emerged, we can take away the super and sterilize those frames. Now I'm just putting the brood box back up on top of that queen excluder so that um, we can do our full inspection at this point. So use the hive tool and gently prise the frames apart. And here you can see that the mouse actually did damage to that first frame. So that will completely have to be replaced and taken out because there will be uh, feces and urine from the mouse on it. The bees won't work it. And we certainly don't want it, any of that sort of stuff coming in contact with the honey and the honey stores. So I've just put it down to the side of the box so that um, we can replace it afterwards. And the bees are just on that frame there, but I'm looking at the dark side of the frame first for the queen. The, there's a better chance she's on the dark side running away from daylight than on the daylight side of it. So I'm going to put this to the back wall and go for the next frame. And again, when I take it out, I'm looking at the dark side first. So this um, particular frame is full of, of uh, stores. Some of it is capped and some of it is fresh nectar. And again, I'm taking a quick look for the queen just to make sure that she's not there and I don't damage her. So here we see a small bit of brood. We're in as far as the brood nest. Again, I have looked at the dark side of the frame first, just to make sure the queen isn't there. And we're just taking a quick look through this. It's a spring inspection to see what the story is. And we can sort out our hive records after that. So we can see that there's larvae there on that particular frame pearly white larvae um, on the verge of being capped. You can see one cell there in the center is capped. So they're just at the capping stage on that particular frame. So a nice frame of brood coming out there. Again, I'm checking again on the dark side. I'm not spending too long at this because it isn't roasting warm or anything, but I do want to take a look to make sure the queen is there. So there's your frame of brood, very few holes in it, a few, not too bad. 
Um, nice frame of brood. Okay. So this is a super frame we would have put into the brood nest last year um, with the intention that the bees would draw out drones and that bottom section. If you do that, they will just draw down wax and we need to get as many drones into the air as possible for the other queens to mate. So right now there is actually no drone brood in that colony. It's too early in the season and there isn't enough bees there for them to start drawing drone brood yet. But we just want to do a quick look through it. Um, again, looking for our queen at all stages. So look at the dark side of the frame first. And there's our queen. There she is with the blue dot in her back. There at the corner of the hive tool. She's got a way longer body than the other bees, so you'll actually get very used to looking for her after a while and you find her easy to spot. So be careful, she will run to the dark, darker side of the frame, so she's gone around the back of the frame there and she'll travel back again, you can be sure of it. And um, there she is walking down the outside of the frame there, ready to go around the top of it. Now make sure that she isn't on the timber work when you put her back into that frame, back into the box. Give her time to move across into the center of the frame before you put the frame back. Otherwise you could squash her up against the timber or the edge of the box itself. So she's moved across there. I can see her from where I'm standing and I'm making sure that that side of the frame isn't hitting the box going back in. And we have come to the end of the brood nest there. So the bees have another frame to draw there. And then they have a couple of extra frames there at the end that they haven't touched at all yet. So we can put this box together. We can replace the frame, the first frame that was at the back there nearest the beekeeper with a brand new frame that doesn't hasn't been damaged by any mice and then reassemble the hive putting everything back together again so you can see a bee there with pollen on her hind legs and all i'm doing with the hive tool here is getting rid of some of the brace comb that would be at the top of the frames there so that i can sit the queen excluder down evenly on top of those frames and get on with my job. So if you just take a quick look at the entrance then you can see the different color pollens on the bees coming in there. So there's white and yellow and orange and um, nice variety of pollen coming in. Their white would have been from white thorn. Your yellows and your oranges could be orange, could be dandelion. The yellow could be absolutely anything in that particular apiary. Um, it's totally dependent on what's in your area. Well, once you see a nice flow of different color pollens coming into your box, um, it's usually a fairly good sign. Now, just to put that, um, we've put the queen excluder and the super and a new super onto it. There's a Perspex crown board comes with those particular hives. There's no need for that timber one there. It's just been stored there because there are sport to be escapes in it and the roof goes back on the colony. So again, you can see plenty of pollen coming in down there at the entrance. Um, bees are busy, they're getting on with their job and they're walking away. Now, the next thing we did here on this project was we thought beekeepers how to diagnose diseases and how to look for diseases and do disease inspections specifically on colonies. So the colony that we're looking at here has 10 drawn frames of brood. The frames are brand new frames and it is a very clean colony, but at the same time, you must go through each frame as you go along and check absolutely everything in this colony. So here we see that the bees are, the bees have drawn out the frame. I'm doing a quick look for the queen and once I make sure she's not there, then I shake the bees into the colony and uh, have a proper look at the frame itself. So I just left that frame down there at the front entrance so that I don't forget to put it back in. So again, I'm looking at the dark side of the frame first. 
And as it's a brand new frame, the bees have drawn it out. The queen has laid it up. Queens love brand new frames for laying up. So there's a concentric circle of eggs inside in that. There's a bit of pollen around the outer periphery of the brood nest. And then there's nectar open stores above that again. So you can see the tiny little white threads there are actually eggs laid by the queen. So we need to get in as far as the brood there to um, have a proper look for diseases or brood diseases within the colony. But if there's a chance that there's any EFB in this colony, which is what we're looking for here, it would be on the outer periphery of the brood nest. So again, I'm doing a quick look to see if the queen is there. I'm looking at the dark side of the frame first, and then I'll turn it over. And again, shake the bees off the frame. You can't do anything with the bees on the frame. This frame, This frame now is full of larvae, um, but the larvae is not kept yet. So we have lar larvae in around the middle of it. We have uh, some pollen and then we have some stores on that again. So we're looking along the outer periphery there. Any of those larvae there, if there was anything wrong with them, would be distorted and neglected on the outer periphery of the frame. So now we're into the brood nest. And again, we're going to take a quick look for the queen to make sure she's not on the frame before we start. And once we're certain she's not there, then we can shake the bees into the colony and take a proper look at what's going on here. Now, I'm not happy with the quality of the brood that's on that particular frame. There's a lot of patches in it. There's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of holes. It looks as we would call it pepper pot or shot brood. And there's something else going on here, you know, in this particular colony, it was a newly mated queen that was inside there. So we have to do some further investigation to see what's wrong here. Is it the way she's not mated properly? Or is there something underlying going on inside in the colony? So here we're just something caught one of the beekeepers eyes and they were just doing an inspection to see what's actually inside in the cell there but it was pollen that was at the back of the cell but on further investigation here at the top of that toothpick you can see sac brood larvae larvae has turned to sac brood so we have some sac brood virus in the middle of this but i think we have something else wrong here as well so this would have been the gang that it did that um training on the day So we need to do an inspection then on every single suspect cell we see. So the one there at the bottom of the hive tool is just being capped. But anything that's discolored or sunken or has been chewed or anything else needs to be investigated. Like this one over here is out on its own. Why is it out on its own? Here we see drone brood, but the drone brood here in the middle here is discolored. It's a different color. Chances are the drone brood in those three cells there is dead underneath it. Here we see larvae with its tongue out. That would be as a result or could be as a result of Varroa. We also see cells on their own here and not emerged. All these need investigation. On investigation, we may discover that there's a, a heavy Varroa infestation. Like we see here, there's three mites on that particular bee and it's got deformed wings. Here we see a larvae that's kind of melted. There's a hole here on the side of the cell, so that needs investigation, and this one here needs investigation. Um, and here we have a larvae that's melted looking here compared to this one here. So that looks like it may be EFB. We need to do a test for it. And here we're seeing um, a whole heap of problems on this particular uh, frame. There's cells out on their own. There's larvae coming out there that are not okay. There's all sorts of problems here. There's sunken cappings here that need investigation with darker colors under the cappings like you see here. All of the, those issues or problems need to be investigated on that particular frame. So the beekeeper here got very suspicious. Again, you can see frames here with different colors under the cappings and the beekeeper here got very suspicious. And um, those that's melted looking and that's even worse. This one underneath it is actually worse here. 
Um, but both of those would be EFB. OK, this one has got segments. This one hasn't got segments. This needs investigation. So. Again, this one here is twisted and contorted. It needs to be investigated compared to this one here. And it, it's twisted at an angle. These are the sort of things you're looking out for. So there's your melted appearance here as again. So the beekeeper here suspected EFB and um, is now going to do a test for EFB on this particular colony. And these lateral flow devices that are available from Vita have four components inside them. The buffer solution with uh, sodium azide and the ball bearings, the little uh, plunger or syringe, something to scoop out the contents of the larvae, and then the actual device itself for doing the test. And the instructions are on the back very clearly with nice little diagrams, so it's easy enough to figure out um, how to do it. So you go to the and pick out the right cell here or the suspect cell here. So they're, they're trying to make a decision now on which one they'll pick out. And they're going for one that looks melted, has lost its segmentation, and they're just simply going to scoop out that larvae out of the bottom of the cell if they can get it out. Here she comes. And it's melted looking and into that a bottle of sodium azide with the ball bearings inside it. And then they're going to shake it for 20 seconds. As per the instructions. And after 20 seconds, then they're going to open it, take some of it up into the little syringe that the plastic syringe that came with it there. So they're going to open the lateral flow device. And like I said, it's very, very similar to the ones we were all using for COVID testing, which we should all be familiar with at this stage. So once the larvae or the suspect larvae has been in the solution for over 20 seconds, um, just take, suck it up into that little plunger there and put about three drops into the well here um, so that the product can travel across the screen and we can have a look to see what it's doing. So it doesn't take very long at all for that product to travel across the screen. It takes about a minute, not even that. And you'll have your answer fairly shortly after doing this test. It just means being patient. But if you look here, there are cells here that are discolored as well. They need investigation. The one here needs investigation. Anything that looks discolored, that looks something that looks different to the ones around it needs to be investigated. So the product is traveling across the window and it's nearly gone the full ways across the window and almost automatically we see two gray lines here, one for test and one for control. The control line comes up to tell you the unit is working and the test line comes up then if it's positive. So here we have two gray stripes in the well. That particular colony is positive for EFB. Now EFB is a notifiable disease, so you must send a sample of the brood comb off to the Department of Agriculture. So here's another um, gang of beekeepers that um, learned about AFB on one of the training workshops that we did. But here you can see, firstly, the um, beekeeper here suspects there's something wrong and cut out a piece of comb here and sent it off for diagnosis. But the biggest mistake this beekeeper has made here in this particular instance is they haven't cleared the bees off the frame to see what they're doing. He will eventually cop it, but it took him a few minutes to realize I can't do this with the bees on the frame. It's a lot easier with the bees off it. So now he has remembered to shake the bees off and he's going to find it a lot easier to deal with what's left on the frame. So now he can actually um, investigate suspect cells. And in this case, you can see the ropey larvae coming out of the 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 contents of the cell, that's a typical sign of AFB. And so are all these sunken cappings that you see here in the holes inside in the larvae. So this is what that ropey content can look like. And again, here we have another sample from a different beekeeper. Now, this is really badly infected, this particular colony. 
um, I'm not too sure that there's any good cells left in it. You can see the holes here in the corner of the cells where the bees have been trying to investigate what's going on underneath the cappings. The cappings are sunken, they're discolored, the ropey content. And again, here the beekeeper has got a different testing kit. It's a testing kit for AFB, taken a suspect sample, put it into the sodium azide, shaken for 20 seconds, and after 20 seconds then puts three drops into the lateral flow device and waits for a result. So here you can see, again, we have the control line and then we have a faint test line, again, giving it a positive for AFB. Now, again, this is a notifiable disease and you must send a sample off to the Department of Agriculture for positive confirmation. But this, in a matter of minutes, gave the beekeeper um, the result. Now, all suspect cells need to be investigated. Anything out on its own, anything that looks suspect, they must all be investigated. Now here we have a bee emerging with Varroa on its back and another Varroa here on its side. So your problems may or may not be AFB, but we need to investigate everything. Here again, the bee is emerging with its tongue sticking out. We have dead larvae here, they're dead drones coming out. You can see the Varroa mites here on the, the cells and there's three Varroa mites there on that honeybee. We also came across sac brood during the workshops. So this is what your sac brood looks like. Wax moth. The wax moth makes tunnels through the frames. And as it makes tunnels through the frames, it leaves a track like this and uh, you get what we call ball brood. And if you look at this ball brood, then you'll see that the larvae is at the red eye stage. Those tracks were made by wax moth larvae. And this is what the wax moth larvae looks at, like here. There it was on a frame of pollen and here you see it on the inner cover of a nook box. But that wax moth larvae will burrow into under the cappings and go back and forth um, uh, under the cappings and create those tracks or trails that we saw there. And of course, the Wexamoth larvae doesn't really like light and is just trying to get away from me at this point in time. So thank you for your attention. And this is just some of the footage that we got on the NAB project, which was sponsored by Science Foundation Ireland.